crafty friends it's jess from jesscrafts.com and today i have a card for the latest newton's nook designs inky paws challenge this tiki time set came out in the latest newton's nook designs release it was a huge release with lots of fun stamps and dies and now they have their inky paws challenge which you can enter following the theme for a chance to win a gift certificate to the shop so I'll leave that link in the video description below for you to check out and play along. I am starting with some gloss paper. This is some high quality gloss paper from Seaside Stamping Inc but there are a lot of different gloss papers out there and some people work with photo paper and find they get good results. Um, I just encourage you to experiment. I got a package of this gloss paper, really liked it, haven't used it up yet so I've had no reason to try anything else. I'm working with color bursts, and color bursts, um, a lot of people think, oh, you gotta use watercolor paper with it because it's a watercolor medium, but it gives a really interesting result on gloss paper because it dries really quickly, and so you get a lot more of those interesting variations and like the little spots that come out of the color burst, and they don't, it doesn't spread as much, and I kind of like the interesting look that it gives. I do find I use a little bit more color burst when I'm working on the gloss paper than maybe when I'm working on watercolor paper, but um, you know, I have quite a bit of color burst and probably like any of my craft supplies won't use it up. So I'm okay with using a little bit more. So I have a paintbrush here and I'm only spreading water on a part of the paper because I don't want the color burst to go everywhere. I want to control where the color burst goes and the easiest way to do that is to only wet part of the paper. So um, I'm going to take my time with this and um, kind of just go layer by layer and let one part of it dry before I move on to the next layer so that the colors don't get muddy and blend together. I want to have some distinct colors. If you look at the inspiration photo for New and Snook Designs, it uh, has this really colorful sunset and I'm trying to you know, kind of pull some colors from that and be inspired by that. And it is a summer theme, you don't have to match the photo, um, but it, it would make uh, word work really well with a new Paradise Palm stamp set. So when I was working on this, there were some areas where the blue was really coming into the pink, and at first I was trying to keep them a little bit more distinctly separated. And so you can activate the color with water and then use a napkin to sort of pull some color off. Because it's a watercolor medium, that generally works. You can usually pull color off. Again, I want to create a lot of interest. Because this gloss paper is going to show every little spot, there, things aren't going to blend as easily together, I'm trying to take advantage of that and work with that um, for my card today. And so I'm just gonna keep going. And like, so then I added some purple, then I added some orange and some more purple, and um, just sort of, not really like layering the colors in the sense of putting them on top of each other, but just sort of, you know, going down the card, adding another color and then another color, looking back at the sunset. And now when I put the yellow next to the purple, I should have known that really wouldn't work because yellow and purple together will make brown as they are complements on the color wheel. So do try to keep little things like that in mind as you mix colors. Blue and orange will do the same thing. And another note about color burst is either of the purples are very, very strong and concentrated. And so when you lay down the purple, um, it'll look almost black. You see, to fix the whole purple yellow problem that I had, I just layered some orange over it. I find that with the gloss paper, it's a lot easier to layer color bursts on top of each other. Usually with watercolor, when you put two colors on top of each other, you'll kind of get a blended in between look. But because this really dries into the paper and sticks to the paper differently, I found I was able to um, layer the colors over and hide colors a little bit easier. Once I had an arrangement that looked, probably looks like a complete and utter mess, but um, with kind of the effect I was going for, just a really fun, crazy sky sort of thing. I don't, I don't really have a word for it. I was just looking for something really fun and abstract in the background. I flicked a lot of water onto it, then I shucked shook a little bit more color burst onto it and I'm just really trying to have fun. Like I said, it probably looks like a hot mess but that's kind of what I was going for and that's what I love about this is that you just basically make a mess but it looks really cool in the end because the colors are just so bright and fun. Once I had a mess <laughs> that I loved, I just took some shimmer spray from Sukaneko and spritzed that all over to give a little bit of shine to this. What I kind of like about the Sukaneko is that 
it, more than looking like white glitter, it kind of takes on the color of what's underneath it. So the areas that um, are orange kind of look like they have orange glitter on it, and the purple areas look like they have purple glitter on it. It's just a little bit different than the Perfect Pearl, so I thought that was interesting. So the one that I'm using is the Sukuneko Sparkle. There's also a frost, and I think the frost is more of a white glitter. Once I had my mess <laughs> that I liked, um, my you know concentrated abstract painting mess, I uh, trimmed it down to... Um, about an A2 size card, but enough to leave a black border since I tend to really like the black borders and I think that they make the sentiments and other things pop a little bit. So I usually take it about half inch in from an A2 size card. I am assembling it in my Misty because I want to do some stamping. But as mentioned before, this is gloss paper, which means that it's super slick. And so it's a little bit more tricky to get a really great stamped impression. So in order that nothing shifts around and goes where I don't want it, I found the Misty to be super helpful in this sense. Also, I'm working with some solid stamps. And no matter how good quality the stamps are, if you don't apply even pressure, you won't get a perfect image the first time on solid stamps. So again, my Misty just guarantees that I get a great image. So I have stamped down a tiki. And earlier you might have seen that I took um, the Inka Dinka Doo stamping mask paper and made two tiki masks, one for each of the tikis in the set. Because what I'm looking to do is create a little row of tikis along the bottom. And I don't want them to overlap each other and lose their detail. So I'm going to stamp it in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Put a little bit of clear embossing powder on it so that it um, will stay dry and um, give a nice crisp impression. And melt that then move on by uh, masking off what I've stamped and stamping something else. So you'll see I'll start to do that. First I wanted to create one little tiki drink to kind of be the focal point and then the rest of them I'm just going to stamp plain tikis. And because I'm using my heat gun a lot, once it's heated up one time it's still pretty hot every time I take it to the paper because it doesn't cool down that quickly. But always a recommendation to avoid curling. You probably want to let your heat gun heat up a little bit, heat both sides of the paper, but honestly, with everything that is all over this paper, it is definitely warped and bent. And so I just use a lot of adhesive. So if you're ever wondering, like, how do you make the cards stay flat at the end? Just a lot of really strong adhesive is pretty much my answer to that dilemma. So here I've laid the mask over my original Tiki drink, and I'm ready to add a second one. Each time I stamp it, I'm going to use the Misty. And so you'll see towards the end, I just kind of fast forward. I just, I don't show you all the stamping because I have to line up every single one and move the mass and it is a pretty time consuming process but I thought it was a really unique card and a fun different way to use the tikis so I think that I'll just show you a few so you get the idea of what I did. Uh, stamping it, adding the embossing powder, melting it, masking it, like just kind of keep repeating that process. Every time I add the embossing powder and melt it because I don't want the embossing powder to come off in between steps. And I also have to move my Misty out of the way each time because the Misty has a foam pad in it, which your heat gun will melt the foam of the Misty, and you definitely wouldn't want that because that pad is helpful to getting a great stamped image. And as expensive as the Misty is, you do not want to ruin your Misty. So um, once I have, um, sorry, when I was moving the card around, you might have saw that my Misty magnets kind of stuck together there. And as many of you know, I have tape on my Misty magnets and part of the reason for that is because when they do stick together it's easier to pull them apart. Sometimes it starts to cause the tape to rip which is fine because you can just put new tape on it but those are the regular Misty magnets with a little bit of tape. It makes them easier to pick up off the Misty and if they ever get stuck together it makes them easier to pull off of each other. So I'll keep up that stamping and then place it on some black paper as mentioned before. And that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you the link to the Newton's Nook Designs Inky Paws Challenge and to um, possibly some products and uh, my social media in the video description below. So you can check that out or leave me any questions if you have them. Thanks for watching. Bye.